This video will discuss atomic spectra and the selection rules for transitions between different electronic states with different term symbols. So we'll start by saying we have some initial term symbol, 2s plus 1 lj. We hit that atom with some photon of light of energy h nu. It absorbs the photon, goes to some new state, 2s prime plus 1 l prime j prime. So our delta S during this transition is going to be S prime minus S. Delta L, the change in L, is going to be L prime minus L. Delta J is going to be the change in J, J prime minus J. So what are our selection rules for these atomic transitions? First rule, delta S equals zero. So singlets go to singlets, doublets go to doublets, triplets go to triplets. So whatever it is for 2S plus 1, it's going to stay that the multiplicity and the value of s is going to stay the same. All right, for our value of delta L, delta L can be plus 1, 0, or minus 1, with the caveat that we can't go from L equals 0 to L equals 0. So, for example, for an s, we can't go from s to s because that's L equals 0, but we can go from s to p, which will be from 0 to 1. From P, we could go, which is L equals 1, we could go to 0, 1, or 2, S, P, or D. From D, L equals 2, we could go to 1, 2, or 3, P, D, or F, etc. beyond that. And for delta J, delta J is going to equal plus 1, 0, or minus 1, again with the caveat that we can't go from 0 to 0. So for delta J, we can go from 0 to 1. We can go from 1 to 2, 1, or 0, from 2 to 3, 2, or 1, etc. Um, we'll remember, remind ourselves that the values of j that are allowed for a term symbol are going from the absolute value of L plus S to the absolute value of L minus S. S, L, and j are all greater than 0, and L is an integer, and S and j are required to be integers or half integers. All right, so using what we just said, from a singlet S0, the only thing we can transition to is going to be a singlet P1. Delta S equals 0, delta L equals plus 1, and delta J equals plus 1. See, we didn't, we're, we're not allowed to go to singlet P0 because we can't go from uh, the 0 to 0 in J. Oh, wait, never mind. There isn't a singlet P0. Never mind that. Okay, from a doublet S one half, we can go to doublet P. We could go to doublet P one half or doublet P three halves. Those are the two allowed values of J for doublet P, and they are both within one of one half. For triplet P zero, we could go to triplet P one. We could go to uh, triplet S one, or we could go to triplet D one. So. Trip D1, uh, triplet D1 is an allowed term symbol. Uh, triplet S1 isn't allowed. We're not going from 0 to 0 again in J. And P, triplet P can also be triplet P1. So we could go to another triplet P1 state where delta S equals 0, delta L equals 0, but delta J is plus 1. All right, and then our most complicated example, if we had quartet F seven halves. J equals 7 halves, S is going to equal 3 halves, and L equals 3 for F. So we can go from, we can go to L equals 3 plus 1, 3 plus 0, or 3 minus 1, 4, 3, or 2, which would be a G, F, or D term symbol. Delta J equals plus or minus 1 or 0. So 7 halves, we can go up to 9 halves, we can stay at 7 halves, or we can go down to 5 halves. So putting all three of those together, the possible transitions we can go from quartet F7 halves, remembering that we have to stay in a quartet, we have to stay in, we have to stay in S equals 3 halves. We can go from quartet F7 halves to quartet G9 halves, quartet G7 halves, quartet F9 halves, quartet F five halves. In fact, I believe we could also go to quartet another quartet F seven halves, as well as quartet D seven halves 
or quartet D five halves. So these are example of the types of transitions allowed in atomic spectra according to our selection rules giving us the allowed values at which we can change our values of S, L, and J for our term symbol.